Good morning, New Covenant Church. Uh, my name is Caitlin. Thank you for joining our Sunday morning live stream. Uh, really quickly before we get started today, uh, we do have a couple of announcements for you guys. So next Friday is Good Friday, and we are doing a Good Friday service. It's going to be starting at 7 p.m. on Friday. We will not be live streaming this, so if you guys are uh, local, please come out and join us to celebrate. And then next Sunday is Easter Sunday. And we'll be doing two services. So we're going to have a 9 a.m. service and an 11 a.m. service. And only the 11 a.m. service will be live streamed. So if you're local, please come out and join us for either service. But if you're watching online, just know that we're only going to live stream the 11 a.m. Okay? Uh, really quickly, uh, we're so glad you're joining us this morning. Um, I did have a scripture I wanted to read for you guys before we got started. Uh, it's from Psalms 44, and it's verse 6. Um, and it says, for not in my bow do I trust, nor can my sword save me, but you have saved us from our foes and have put to shame those who hate us. In God, we boasted continually and we will give thanks to his name forever. I was really praying this morning. I, I, I kind of like winning, you know, and I was just really praying this specifically that God has put to shame those who hate us. Every adversary of our soul, whether it be any demonic powers or principalities, you know, Jesus has overcome them with his name. So today I was just praying for you guys and I was believing for an outpouring of victory that whatever you're going through, you would feel like the Lord is with you and that you could continually praise him and thank him for his salvation. So I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, please make sure to comment in the link below. There should be a link there for you guys. Let us know what the Lord's doing in your life, how he's moving. We do want to stay connected, and we hope you enjoy the service. How you all doing? You know what today is? It's rock day. Well, all you scholars in the Bible should know exactly what I'm talking about. When Jesus came into Jerusalem, everyone was praising him. The leader said, hey, do you, don't you care about these people doing this? 
of these children praising you? And he said, if they don't do it, the rocks will cry out. Yeah. So it's, it's Palm Sunday, obviously. But all the things that take place on this day, it's uh, read your Bible about this day and go to all the different references that it talks about. Jesus coming in on a donkey, the palm branches, the rocks, all of that speaks of the glory of God and the wonderfulness, I guess, of the Lord. And we are going to praise him today. Amen. Father, we thank you that you give us evidence of who you are. The fulfillment of prophecy when he comes into the into Jerusalem and all the things that take place gives evidence of your word and the truth of your word and the promises fulfilled. We will praise you this day in the name of Yeshua, our Savior. Amen.
cross Our King of heaven My King forever
Let's not get distracted from the sweet presence of the Lord. Regina has a word for us. I heard the Lord say to open up your nostrils and breathe me in. Just like your prayers are a sweet fragrance to my nostrils, your presence is a sweet fragrance. My fragrance is a sweetness. Drink me in, says the Lord. Breathe me in. I want to go to the most innermost intimate place inside of you. I want to commune with you just like in communion, where you drink me and you eat me. Take it to another level. And then I heard the scripture, taste and see. So Father God, we choose to go to another intimate level with you. God, that we might be in a place, Father, where we know you intimately, where we know what you taste like, what you smell like, where all of our five senses, Lord God, are communing with you, you and us and we and you, Father God. Lord, where we know your voice, where we know every nuance of when you move to the right or to the left, or when you turn your gaze slightly, Father God. Holy Spirit, bring us in to another place of knowing you that we've not ventured before. God, that we would take our relationship with you to the next level. God, you call us your bride, but right now we might be your girlfriend. God, we say new covenant, we choose to be your bride. We choose, Father God, to go to the next level of knowing you like we've never known you before. God, we might be in unity with one another, our brothers and our sisters, where God, we sound like you and we look like you and we smell like you and we taste like you. God, we say we want to be your bride. We covenant with you on a whole nother level as we come into Holy Week, God. Make us holy as you are holy. May we be sanctified and set apart just like a bride would be getting ready for the big day. God, may we be bathed in the fragrance of the Holy Spirit that we might look like and sound like what you desire, that your kingdom would come, that we would be your bride, that you are anticipating. I hear you say, come, come my beloved. And we answer back new covenant, yes, 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 I will come. Father, we, we, we stand before you and we say, speak into each of our hearts. And he wants to, he wants to draw you to that place of intimacy. We, we, don't, we don't come to church to, to sing a song. We come to church to worship the Lord. We come to church to draw near to him. And so, Father God, we... We have a choice of our will this morning. We come into your presence. And we receive from you. But Father, we come into your presence to give to you. Lord, we want to know you. And we thank you for it. Lord, we thank you for the, the sweet relationship that you offer to us. We thank you that the blood of Jesus was shed on Calvary so that we, we can walk in. And Father, we bless you, and we thank you, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Awesome. 
Let's stand to our feet. Take a second, turn around, greet somebody. Give somebody a high five or a fist bump or whatever. Uh, if you are K through five, go on, uh, go on back to Kids Church if you've not already gone. Check, test, check. Test, test. There, there we, we go. go. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I, I would like to introduce us since it's been maybe a little while and sure. people might not know who we are. So my name is Amanda and this is my husband, James. <laughs> Doesn't she look beautiful today? Every day. So uh, New Covenant, let's go ahead and give it up for our first time guests that are here in the house this morning. We are thankful that you all chose to uh, do church with us this morning. Uh, if you are a first-time guest, uh, there is a Connect card that's in the seat back in front of you. It's got a nice little QR code, uh, code on it. Go ahead and scan it. You can fill out information uh, about yourself, if you're interested in serving, uh, whatever it is, all things New Covenant related. We want to get to know you. If you're more of a pen and paper type person, you can fill it out, put into one of these offering uh, baskets on your way out this morning. Uh, again, we're super happy to get to know you. If you're watching online this morning, drop a comment. We want to know where you're watching from and get connected with you. So thank you all for being here today. And I would like to just mention, um, before I go to the next announcement, how diversified we are in this church, how we come from so many different backgrounds and ethnicities, and how we can come together as one community and worship one God. And I just think that's so beautiful to see. Um, and I just, I got chills over me this morning and I, as I was looking around and just thinking, wow, this is going to be a glimpse of what heaven looks like one day. Um, and so if you want to catch a glimpse of that uh, in, a, in a sequence of getting to hear a bilingual service, uh, that will be this upcoming Friday, Good Friday, and that will be at 7 p.m. We encourage you to come out and get to experience that. She's beautiful. Angie gives a good word. All right, the jackpot. All right, y'all, Resurrection Sunday is next Sunday, March 31st, so a week from today. Uh, so we are going to be celebrating in a couple different ways. There's going to be a 9 a.m. service 
an 11 a.m. service, and then a Spanish service at 1 p.m. In between the 9 and 11 service, there's going to be a photo booth set up in the lobby area, I'm pretty sure. There's going to be an Easter egg hunt, so please invite your friends for that. I believe we have some cards still available. No cards available. All right, we took them all. Uh, So if you want to invite your friends, please do it. Write a message on their Facebook wall. Do something. Get them here. Uh, But no, we're super excited for Easter Sunday. And I did want to mention that the Easter egg hunt is between the 9 a.m. and the 11 a.m. service. So that will be in between both. So you'll be able to participate whether you come to the 9 a.m. or the 11 a.m. And water baptisms will be held on the 28th. And then a class for the water baptisms will be on the 21st of April. So if you're interested, we encourage you to go ahead and sign up on the Church Center app. And then we'll have you come to a class that will help you explain exactly why we do water baptisms and participate in that. And then the water baptisms themselves will happen on April 28th during the a.m. service. Last thing we have for you is Next Steps is going to be happening April 7th after service. That's always the first Sunday of every month. Uh, Again, if you're not sure what Next Steps is, if you're still new with us, uh, this is a time that you can get to know our staff, learn about the mission behind New Covenant, where we're going. It's also the on-ramp to getting involved. Uh, So registration is required to the Church Center app. Um, There's going to be food after church for that for you. There's going to be um, daycare if you need uh, your kiddos to be looked after. So we do have that for you. Uh, I think that's all that we have for you today. Uh, Are you happy to be here this morning? Yeah, let's turn over to Elias for the offering. Good morning, family. Um, We're about to do something that uh, we do every Sunday, uh, and I think it's cool that we get the opportunity to share what God has done um, through our tithes, through our givings. And um, you guys might already know, but the big baskets are for tithes and givings, and the small baskets are for benevolence. Um, My name is Elias, as you guys heard. Um, I have been coming to New Covenant for a little over two years now. Um, I didn't start uh, specifically at New Covenant. I started uh, at Nuevo Pacto. And my testimony is, two years ago, I was... Um, in a position where I had to transfer schools because uh, my major classes or what I wanted to major in, um, they didn't have it. From a town in Valdosta, there's nothing there. Don't look it up. I'm just, I'm, I'm saving you time. Um, it's a little bit, it's like a little bigger than uh, Statesboro, but th- there's nothing there. And I remember I, I found out that I had finished my core classes and that I needed to transfer. So I was like, okay, God, so where to? Um, and I had a conversation with some, someone, and they mentioned Georgia Southern. Didn't know where it was at or anything about it. So I applied. I got accepted. I told my parents, and I was like, hey, um, just to let you know, uh, I have to, like, move out in two months or whatever. They're like, oh, okay. And that wasn't the reaction that they had, but just I'm saving time. Um, and I was like, yeah, like, I need to find uh, somewhere to stay and, and all this stuff. And then they're like, okay, um, we need to find you a house where you can worship. I was like, Mom, I need a house where I can stay first. Um, But, like, you know, my parents um, are pastors. They've been pastors for over 20 years. And I was um, at the stage where I just didn't know what was going to go on. Um, And we decided uh, to leave uh, Valdosta on a Sunday to find a house of worship. In my mind, I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'm going to honor this. I'm going to honor this. I'm going to honor you, God. Long story short, when we got here, we were searching for uh, Spanish churches because of my parents uh, fluently speak Spanish. They speak English also, but because where I was coming from, from a fluent Spanish church, they wanted me to go to a, a preferred that I went to a Spanish church. So I was like, okay. We found Novo Pacto. As you guys know, is it's a new it's one. Um, to sum everything up, uh, we came to the service, and I was like, God, I get why you want me to seek you first. Um, I was really afraid because I had, like, two months to find housing. Like, as you guys know, as a student, there's, like, a lot of worries that we have. And one of them was housing because I was like, Lord, like, I mean, unless you want me to stay here in the church and sleep somewhere, like, I'm okay with that. But um, that wasn't his plan. But honoring him first and going, um, seeking him first, even in the most simple things as finding a house of worship, that same Sunday, he blessed me with a place to stay. Like, it was just, it was God. That's all I can say. And um, what I've noticed and something that I was reminded this week was that when we notice and when we realize that everything that we have, everything that we are, and we realize it and we say, oh, it's, it's for you, it's for God, he does big things, even in the small things. So I just want to encourage you guys, as you guys give, um, even in the hardest times, in the smallest moments, put him first and you'll see a big difference. Um, so I just want to pray, and um, uh, you guys just have that mindset of putting him first. Um, Father God, we thank you. Father, we just say that uh, we want you to be magnified. We want you to be glorified, Father. 
Um, I pray for the tithes and offerings uh, that are given here today. I ask, Lord, that you bless them, Father, and that we know that you, your, your hand never gets tired, Father. You always provide. You never leave us alone, Father, and you're always with us, Father. I pray for New Covenant. I pray for Novo Pacto. I pray for everyone in this room right now who is your son, is your child, Father, is your daughter. I ask that you bless them, Lord, and that you just keep giving them new revelation, new understanding, Father, of who you are, even in the smallest moments. In the name of Jesus, amen. everybody so let's drop some ping pong balls in our ping pong ball tower so each one of these is two thousand dollars so this is two and four and six and pocket pocket there you go and eight eight thousand dollars puts us at three hundred and ten thousand dollars so thank you so much for your giving we are continuing to gently push architects and engineers down the road. So uh, we'll, we will get there eventually. So thank you for your patience as well. Uh, I want to do a few quick uh, call outs of stuff. Uh, family thanks. want to uh, recognize that today is Pastor Merle's birthday. So he is 78 years young. And so I also want to uh, mention that Loy, our drummer, and Hannah are engaged. <laughs> yep. And uh, so there's that. And uh, I think, I think it, those are all my, my other subsidiary announcements. The uh, Break Free class is wrapping up here pretty soon. Uh, just as a reminder, there is a meeting tonight at 5.30 for that, and then the uh, break-free class will actually happen at 6.30 tonight. So if you show up at 5.30 and you're in the class, you'll be sitting around. We do have a Sunday night service at 6 tonight. Uh, Brother Roy is going to speak, and that will be good. So anyway, let's, uh, let's pray. Let's bless our uh, message time and get into scripture. So Father God, I just thank you today for your word. I thank you that your word is awesome and amazing. Lord, I thank you for the depth and the richness of the scripture. Father, allow us to uh, receive everything that you have for us from your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. So we've been in Luke chapter for a hot minute. So uh, this is uh, the seventh and last, last of the uh, messages from this passage that I'll read here in just a second. So again, I believe this was Jesus' uh, ministry launch where he's laying it out. This is what my, my ministry is gonna be all about. It's gonna be about the word. It's gonna be about salvation and freedom and deliverance and healing and anointing and all these things that we've talked about for the last several weeks. And just, just remember that Jesus very specifically explains this as his ministry and gives that ministry ministry to the disciples, which means us, it is our role to walk in each of these things. This is not, oh yay, Jesus did that in the Bible and we'll just, you know, we'll wait till we get to heaven. This, this is a, a charge and a responsibility to us as believers to walk in each of these things that we've been talking about, okay? And so the church needs to uh, preach freedom to the captives, and good news to the poor. That is, that is our job. That's why we are here. Um, the, you may have noticed that the world around us is, is a hot mess. And they need good news. And they need deliverance. Yeah? 
Maybe you've seen that. Maybe you live under a rock. But um, we, it, it is our role to, to walk the path of discipleship and lead people into their freedom. Okay? So um, Luke 4, I'm going to read verses 18 and 19 again. And it says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free. Today is going to be to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Amen? So, favor. So what Jesus is doing here, Jesus is announcing the the dawning of a new day. He is announcing the dawning of a new day of walking in the favor of God by faith. Okay? And he's, he's quoting Isaiah 61 in this passage. But there's a little, there's, there's more that he doesn't read or isn't captured here. The, the piece that maybe is important that he, that he omits here is in Isaiah, it says, proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and it says, in the day of vengeance is the next phrase. Well, he does not mention that here, and it's not, I know Jesus didn't forget Right, and so there must be a reason. So maybe the reason that Jesus doesn't declare vengeance is because he knew that his hearers would think that vengeance belonged to someone else. Right, like I want to get you know get you know, he needs some vengeance. You know, if we were if we were all honest, you can probably think of somebody that you think needs a little vengeance, right? And so he doesn't talk about the vengeance because the the Hebrews, the Jewish people that were listening to him would have immediately said, Yes, vengeance on those Gentiles. But Jesus is saying, I'm here to declare the year of favor of the Lord, and I'm by not saying the vengeance, I'm waiting for the Gentiles to come into the kingdom too. I'm waiting for the Gentiles to figure it out and become kingdom participants. And as we read scripture, it is so evident that Jesus, Jesus wanted, God wanted the Gentiles, that's non-Jewish people, that's us, wants them to come into the kingdom so much Acts chapter 10 talks about it. Acts chapter 11 talks about it. Acts chapter 15 talks about it. There's all, all these chapters. There's all this underlying, maybe not obvious stuff in the Gospels where Jesus wants the whole earth to come to him and to walk in favor, not to walk under vengeance, not to walk under wrath. There will be wrath and there will be vengeance in the day of the Lord. Right? Don't just go skipping through life like there's no consequences coming through. Okay? But he's, he's calling us to a place of favor. All right? Everybody good? So let's talk about what favor is. That's, that's kind of where we're going today. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out the word favor. Because in English, I think, you know, it's like, hey, bro, do me a favor. Right? It, that doesn't really mean anything. Um, so we're, I'm trying to figure out what favor is. I'm trying to explain it to us in a way that we can take it home with us. Um, so I think a great definition of favor is two words, demonstrated delight, okay? Demonstrated delight, or it is the tangible evidence that a person is receiving approval from the Lord, right? The tangible evidence that the Lord looks on somebody and is like, this one's mine. That's favor, a demonstrated delight. Now, as we've said many times, to help us understand the use of a word, it's great to go back to the first mention of that word in Scripture. So we're going to do a little first mention look here, and we're going to go back to the book of Genesis. You guys ready for this? All right, so Genesis chapter 4. So Genesis 4, this is the first time the book or the Bible uses the word favor, and I'm reading out of the NIV, and it's, I'm going to read verse 4. Ready? And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of the flocks, period. The Lord looked with 
favor on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Right? We've read this before. I think we've read this recently. So, so the Lord looks at Abel with favor, with demonstrated delight. And the way the, the sentence is structured here, it really looks like he looked at Abel with demonstrated delight and therefore his offering. The, the favor was on Abel, not on the offering. We look and we go, oh, it's about the offering. No, it was about Abel's heart. Okay, now the word favor here in the Hebrew is a word that is mispronounced terribly by someone from Georgia as shahan, because that's what I got. Steadily gaze upon with interest. To steadily gaze upon with interest, that is that word favor in the Hebrew, okay? So I want you to think for a minute about, um, have you ever looked at a newborn baby, right? And so um, I, I go to the hospital, I grab one of my grandkids who's just recently born, and what do you do? You go, you go, oh, yeah. and, you, and you're like, you're looking at the little nose, and if the eyes are open, and you're just like, and you could get lost here. Right, you can spend like a, a, a while, and then it's, it's like, hey, can I have the baby? It's like, no, yo, back off, it's my turn. You know, and you're, and you're just, you're staring at this baby. And you're just like, oh, and even, even if at some point, you know, you know, you're holding this baby, and all of a sudden you hear, and the diaper's full, you still love the baby. The baby's cute. It's not about what the baby does, it's about who the baby is is, right? And so I look, I gaze steadily on this baby with great interest, that's favor. And so if we would say, the baby has you wrapped around their, right? You guys have used that phrase before? Right, Any, you know, anything the baby wants, you're just like, yeah, 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 and you go to the store and you buy a million things, right? And you want to, you know, you know, gifts, and we're going to give you gifts, and we're going to buy you presents. And yeah, I remember buying for Olivia, our oldest grandkid, I remember going and buying her uh, black and white checkered Vans shoes, okay? And um, not a van, it's shoes. And, and so I'm buying her shoes, and I call Hannah, I go, what size would she wear? And then I bought a pair that matched in my size. And so I have two pairs of these vans and I take them and she's like me, you know, maybe two or three and, and she, you know, I would come over to the house and she would see me and she'd go running back into her room and she'd come out and she'd be like. <laughs> pa Papa, where's your shoes? Why aren't you wearing your black and white checker vans, Papa? We can be twins, right? This is favor is when you look at this kid and even today, you guys see me like I'm on the front porch greeting and, and my grandkids walk up and I'm just like, oh, they're so cute. God looks at you like that. That is the favor of the Lord, that the Lord looks at you and he loves you. When you realize that God looks at you and he loves you, then you have now understood favor. And it's not a thing where he's, he randomly picks, right? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, like yeah, you I like, you I like, you I like, eh, not so sure, you I like. It's not like that. It's, it's based on your heart towards him, right? He looked at Abel, whose heart was towards the Lord, and he was willing to bring his, his firstborn animal and sacrifice it. And the Lord looked at that and he goes, oh, his heart is towards me. I'm looking at him, I'm gazing upon him, and I see that his heart is acceptable. I see Cain, his heart is not towards me. His heart is towards, hey, here's a bunch of rotten apples that are left over, I, I'm not gonna do nothing with them, so I'm just gonna give them to you, God. And that was a heart condition. It wasn't the fact that it came, brought fruits and veggies. Because I think God likes fruits and veggies. Okay? 
And, and there are other places in the Old Testament where you can bring grain offerings and vegetable, vegetable fruit type offerings. That's, that's okay. So it was the heart condition. And so the Lord looked with favor with a, with a heart, or he looked with a gaze of intent towards someone. Is, you guys getting it? And so, and so it's up here. It's the eyeballs. So I want, you, I want you to get that it's the eyeballs because then the rest of this passage makes sense. God looked longingly and lovingly on Abel. Cain, he didn't. So then Cain, verse five, his face was what? Downcast. That means that his eye contact with the Lord was what? It was broken. Right? Hey, you know, Lord, I'm bringing you my sheep. I love you. And, C- and Cain's like, nah, I ain't gonna look at you. You guys know what I'm talking about? I didn't wanna look at you. I'm so mad at you. And he's like, rush, rush, rush. You know, hey, honey, can I talk to you? No. Right? His face was downcast. And then the Lord comes back and asks him, after he kills his brother, he goes, hey, where's your brother Abel? And this is in verse nine, and, and he, Cain responds and says, am I my brother's keeper? That really, what that really says is, am I the watchman of my brother? Am I supposed to have eyes on him? I, I don't like him, I don't have eyes on him. I don't have eyes on you because my face is downcast. I don't have eyes on my brother because I just don't like him anymore. And so the Lord tells Cain, you are going to be kicked out of my presence. And so Cain's concern is, wait, 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 wait. You mean that your eyes won't be on me anymore? Oh, no. So if your eyes aren't on me and someone else has eyes on me, they will do me harm. Do you see how it all has to do with what we're looking at? It's the gaze. The favor of God is the gaze with intent. We are to show this to you. Um, let's quick, do some quick cross-references on this thought. It's, it's my eyes are on you. My eyes are on the sparrow it says in the Gospels, right? And so how about uh, Psalm 17, verses seven and eight? Can you pop that up for me? Psalm 17, verse, it says, show me, the, show me the wonders of your great love, you who save by your right hand those who take refuge, refuge in you from their foes. Next verse says, keep me as the apple of your eye. What, what does that communicate? Favor, keep me in your gaze. Continue to gaze at me because you are the apple of my, isn't that the same thing, right? Oh, I just love my baby. You're the apple of my eye. I cannot stop looking at you. And so David, the psalmist, is saying, hey, keep me under your watch. Keep looking at me because that's the place of favor, okay? Check out Psalm 13. I'm just giving you some cross-references to kind of prove my point. Psalm 13, verses three and four says this. David is praying, and he says, look on me and answer. Right, David. Look on me. Gaze upon me. Look at me with favor, Lord. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep in death. Okay, so it's the call to look, the call to look at me. First Chronicles 17, 17, David is praying and, and, and he's, he's talking to the Lord. And he says in First Chronicles 17, 17, if you'd put it up on the screen for me pretty please. It says, as if this were not enough in your sight, God, you have spoken about the future of the house of your servant. You, Lord God, have looked on me as though I were the most exalted of men. You, God, have gazed upon me as if I was someone special, but you have made me special because you look at me. Right? And so there's this whole concept, even in 1 Samuel chapter 1, where uh, the, the woman Hannah is praying in, in the, the tabernacle to, to ask for a child. Her prayer is, Lord, look at me. Just look at me. 
Look at, my, look at my misery, look at my problem, remember me. And so the whole concept of favor, my, God, my friends here, is this, that the Lord wants us to love him and he wants to stare at us and gaze upon us and be intent with his, his vision on our lives and he can keep up with every one of us all the time. And he wants to look at you and he wants to say, you're my favorite. I, I just love you. Man, I just want good stuff for you. Would I ever let something bad happen to my grandkids? No, there's not a chance. Um, like they're out in the yard playing, what am I doing? Watching, right? When, I, when you quit, hey, here's a little tip. When you quit watching your kids, that's when bad junk happens to your kids. Okay? How, how many parents have we figured that out? All right, I'll tell you the story when Zach got hit in the face with a pipe. No, I wasn't watching. i tell you the story. So we were in, living in Oklahoma, and uh, Zach was playing base t-ball with the kids across the street, and they couldn't find a bat, and so they were using a pipe. And they couldn't find a baseball, so they were using a golf ball. And so, but they had the tee, that was the important piece. And so I'm sitting in my driveway across the street with a newspaper, because that was the thing that people did. Back, like when you want information, you would read a newspaper and your fingers would turn black. That was a thing, right? Uh, come on, older guys, help me out here. Uh, you don't do this to find the news, you do this. And so I'm sitting in, the, in my little chair in the driveway with my newspaper, not watching my kid. And so they're playing t-ball and I got this like four foot long pipe. Kid swings, catches Zach right there in the nose. And I just hear this. <laughs> this squeal cry from across the street, and it's like, uh-oh, this, this is lowering the paper. It's like, uh-oh. So God doesn't do that to you. Yes, he's fine. The next phone call was, we're in the kitchen, we got ice on his face, on his nose. I'm on the phone, because uh, the phone was connected to a cord in the kitchen. And it, it's, you, it's like, hey, hun. That, um, just a question, that health insurance we got, what, what hospital does that cover? <laughs> that was that question. Because we, we were such a big time place, we had more than one hospital. I know that, but anyway, so God's eyes are always on you. So if God's eyes are on you for favor, he notices how lovely you are because of who you are, not because of necessarily what you do. And he demonstrates his delight in you in multiple ways. This is the how. God demonstrates his delight towards you by talking to you and leading you. I believe the Lord wants to lead you into good conversations, into good opportunities. He wants to speak to you to get you in the right place at the right time. Okay, I could stand up here for an hour and tell you stories of times where the Lord has spoken to me and led me to a right place at the right time that has turned out for my benefit. I can also stand here and tell you stories of times where the Lord has led me and I ignored it, and I got myself in trouble because I wasn't paying attention. But I know he loves me, and his intent towards me is good. His gaze towards me is good, and he wants to lead me away from the stupid. But I also see that the Lord has the ability to touch someone else's heart and change their heart towards me because I'm his favorite, right? Has, have you ever had a conversation with somebody where they're like, um, oh, I don't normally do this, but I really want to help you out. That's the favor of God. That's, that's the Lord touching this person's heart so that they treat you like you're God's favorite. Okay, and that may be in, in the business setting, that may be in the school setting. It's like, hey, I don't normally do this, but I, I really want to. I don't, know why, I don't know why I want to help you, but I'm going to. When they don't have to, but they wish to. That's the favor of God in, in, your, in your world, Okay, And so the Lord does stuff for you because his gaze is on you and he's looking at you and that is what we call favor. Everybody good? 
The favor of God is his demonstrated delight on you. Now, go with me to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. It's way back here in the back. I'm gonna read this in the NIV and then we're gonna put it on the screen in, in the New King James because it just says it just in such a different way. So it says, for, uh, 2 Peter 1, 2 says, grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Okay? Now, would you put that up in, in New King James for me pretty please? Thank you. Here, here's what I want you to see. The grace of God is unmerited favor, right? We're talking about favor. So the grace of God is you don't deserve that he looks at you and he loves you, but he chooses to, and we call that grace. And peace is the shalom of God. The shalom of God is where you, you walk in peace and you walk in health and you walk in wholeness and everything is just in order in your life and you're walking in this shalom. So this verse is telling us that the unmerited favor, put it back up, in the shalom of God, the unmerited favor in the shalom of God be, what's that word? All of a sudden, I like math. The shalom of God and the favor of God be multiplied to you. I'm looking at that and I go, you know what? That looks, that looks like the favor of God can increase. And I want to know how that works. Does anyone else want to know how that works? I want to know how this works. How can the favor of God and the peace of God be multiplied in such a way that I walk in divine favor and supernatural peace so that the blessing of God are in my life? Ephesians 1, 3 says that he has blessed you in heavenly places with all kinds of amazing spiritual blessings, and I want to walk in them. And so that's what I want to finish up our time talking about this morning, is how to multiply the grace, favor, and shalom of God in your life. Because today, we all like math. Now, if you want to subtract it from you, you're free to leave. If you want to divide it out of you, that's fine, you just Pay, quit paying attention. But if you want it multiplied, we realize then that it multiplies in our life by not being good, but by knowing God. Isn't that what this says? Let it be multiplied through the knowledge of God. The, it's, did everybody see that? Right? It's multiplied through the knowledge of God. So I, I spend time in the presence of the Lord. I know him better. He sees my heart. He gazes on me, and he adds favor. I spend time in his word because I want to get to know him better. He sees my heart, and he adds favor. Okay, this is not check the box Christianity. All right, Lord, I prayed for two and a half minutes. I read three verses. Hit me. That's not it. Okay? That's, it's I spend time with you. I get to know you. I'm meditating on your power, not my mistakes. And then he multiplies favor in your life. Okay? Are we all good? So let's talk about a few. A few I got points. I, of course you know me. I got points. You ready? Number one, be humble. Point number one, you want to multiply favor in your life, be humble. First Peter 5, it's actually the same open page that we were just on, most likely in your Bible, First Peter 5, 5, in the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders, all of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but shows, hmm, favor to the humble. 
God shows favor to the humble. So God, humble is a condition of your heart. And if you walk in this condition of humility before the Lord, he desires to multiply favor over you. And if you walk in arrogance and pride, then God resists you or opposes you. Now let's, how many, by a show of hands, you want God to oppose you? Raise your hand. Your next business venture, you wish for God to oppose you. Your, your path of education, you want God to oppose you. Anybody? Nobody. We're not that dumb. So we need to come to him with humility. Because if I come to him with humility, he does not oppose me. He shows me favor. Don't, don't you want God to like gaze upon what you're doing? Right? Wouldn't, wouldn't it be amazing if we actually cognitively understood that we're on campus getting a degree and God is looking upon us with favor and he's gazing upon what you're doing and says, yeah, let me just heap some peace on that. Right? Let me just heap some favor on that. Let me just look on him and take care of him and be his watchman. Wouldn't that be, isn't that what you want? Right? I, I'm not worried about you know my house. I'm not worried about my stuff. I'm not worried about my, my finances. I'm not worried about my job because I'm humble before the Lord and he gazes on me and is like, I like him. I like him because his heart is right towards me. Is, does that make sense? So part of favor is being humble. Uh, Isaiah 66. with favor those who are humble and contrite in spirit and who tremble at my word how, how do you multiply the favor of God trembling at his word right being contrite being humble those things so if fa favor multiplier multipliers include being humble the second one is to believe for favor I want you to believe for favor, okay? I need to come into this situation and believe that God is for me, okay? Now, the book of Luke 15 gives us the, the whole prodigal son story. I'm not gonna read the scripture. Um, I'm sure you've heard it and you're familiar with it. The, the older son stays home and when his little terrible brother shows back up, and the dad does the party for him. The older brother is frustrated. And, he go, and he's like pouting. And the father comes and talks to him. And the father says, everything I have is you just didn't know. You just didn't exercise that. Right? You could have gone, older brother with a sassy attitude now. You could have gone at any point, picked an animal and come and said, hey, uh, Friday I'm gonna have a party with some of my friends and I'm, I wanna use this one because it's mine anyway. Everything I have, the father says, is yours. You just didn't activate it. How about we are, we're God's favorite and we just believe it. Wouldn't that change things? Wouldn't that change thing? You're, you're, you're at work and you're trying to get this, this big sale or this big contract and you're like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. I don't. What if you just were like, you know, I believe God wants to bless me with this. God's leading me this way. I'm gonna do this thing that he tells me and I'm gonna walk into it and he's gonna open it up and it's gonna be amazing because I believe that he wants my good. I want good for my kids, Right? I got the three kids, I got the four grandkids, I want good for all of them. At no point would I look at my kids and go, I hope you fail that, right? I hope you get sick. I hope your car runs off the road, right? I hope, break a leg, but really, I mean, you, you wouldn't, right? No father would do that, hopefully, but I certainly know the heavenly father wouldn't do that. 
So he wants everything that you put your hands to to prosper. Whether you're in school or you're in sales or you're running a business or whatever, being a mom or whatever it is that you do, he wants you to prosper. We just need to believe that it's all ours to receive instead of saying, well, it's his and he won't give it to me. Come on. He wants to bless you. We should expect to walk in favor. Okay? I mean, don't be dumb. But you should expect to walk in favor. The other day I was down at the county, uh, county offices here. I won't say which office. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. But So I needed, I needed something at the county office. So I walk in. I talk to the person. I go, hey, I need uh, blah, blah, blah. And they go, mm, no. You know, you, you, don't have all, you don't have the right stuff you need. I'm like, oh, what do I need? And she does this, and she goes, let me take you in the back. And I'm thinking, first, I'm thinking, back in school, I was going to get whooping. <laughs> <laughs> so she takes me in the back, walks me down this hall, opens the door, and says, here, this person will help you with everything you need. I'm like, and so the lady looks up at me, and she's like, what do you need? I go, everything, I guess. I don't know. And she goes, okay, well, let me see. We look at the paper. Okay, here, you need this report. Boom. You need this report. Boom. And you need this other thing. Boom. And she handed me like four different county documents and sealed, you know, in the whole spiel. She goes, that's what you need, honey. And I'm like, thanks. I got something I didn't deserve. Why? Because I'm God's favorite. God looks at me and he's like, Poor little David doesn't have the faintest idea what he's doing. <laughs> I'm going to touch this people's heart so that they help him, even though they, don't, they really don't need to. Right? What if we just kind of expected that everywhere we went? Okay? Hey, last night we were out at dinner celebrating Lori and Hannah getting engaged. <laughs> and uh, Leander gets the fried Oreo ice cream dessert. And I thought, my Lord, I need that. I need, need one of those babies. And so the waiter comes by, and I'm like, hey, hey. And I swear that it happened just like this. I, I looked at him, I go, could I get one of those? And he goes, yeah. And then Gio, who works at this restaurant, walks up like a half second later and hands him one that he looks at, and he hands it to me. From the point where I said, can I have to where I had a spoon in my hand was less than four seconds. <laughs> and I'm like, guess what? I'm God's favorite. <laughs> I just believe that that's how life's supposed to be. Okay? I, I was talking with, I won't say who, because I don't necessarily think it's, I got, didn't get permission. I was talking to someone this morning that was telling me that they were, they're trying to start a new business and it has taken off beyond their wildest dreams and they haven't even started yet. Like, I've got so much going on, I don't know what to do with my new business. And they just like figured it out two weeks ago that they wanted to do this business. Shouldn't we all live that way? We should because turn to your neighbor and say, I'm God's favorite. I'm God's favorite. <laughs> all right. You can also say that you are God's favorite. <laughs> All right. So I want you to, number one, I want you to be humble. Two, I want you to believe God for favor. Number three, I want you to speak it or declare it. Speak it or declare it. All right. I am not interested in struggling. So why do we say it? So I just speak it. Speak, my faith, we tell you guys in spirit class, my faith is voice activated. And so I read the Bible and I see the promises of God and, I, and, and my voice activation is, uh, hey, I want this too. Okay, me, yeah, right? Got extras? I'll take some of that. Okay, I will say, hmm, shows favor to the humble, I'll have some of that. 
Okay, can we come back for seconds? I want more of that. And so we voice activate his promises. So what if you're walking into a meeting and instead of mumbling under your breath, you know, oh God, don't fire me, don't fire me, don't fire me, don't fire me. Oh Lord Jesus, what do I do if I lose my job today? And once you walk into that meeting and say, you know, the Lord's shield is around about me. The, Lord, the Lord's got me. The Lord's strength for me, right? We, we get into this negative kind of whiny about things. Why don't we just walk in and declare God's favor over our lives, right? Hey, I'm, you know, I, this is not me, but I'm pursuing a musical co- career and I believe the Lord is gonna, gonna bless it. Why don't you say it? Hey, I'm, you know, starting a real estate business. I believe the Lord wants to bless it. I'm going to school to get a degree, and I believe that the Lord wants to bless it, right? I used to struggle with one of my three children, I shall not say which, (laughs) that would always say, I can't, okay? I can't. Well, you know, just trust God, I can't. You know, you, I think you'll do good. I can't. You know, but the Lord, you know, big soccer game tomorrow. It wasn't Zach. Uh, no, and, and I remember sitting there at, at like at bedtime prayer, and it was just like, it's going to be good tomorrow. I, I just can't. And at some point, I just want to reach over and, you know? And, but I, I, you can't do that because, you know, they take your kids away. <laughs> But I remember, I probably said this to my person who was my biological offspring (laughs) a thousand times. I probably said, those who say that they can and those who say that they can't are usually both correct. Those who say they can, probably can. And those who say they can't, probably can't because we get like we get preconditioned to be quitters it's gonna be hard it's gonna be hard i knew it's gonna be hard i quit so come on we talk ourselves into trouble we talk ourselves into unbelief and at some point you just gotta stop it okay well, we're starting this business, but I know we're going to go bankrupt. <laughs> Do it? Yes, you are. Because you've declared it. Right? Well, you know, we're, we're going to get married, but I know we're always going to be broke. Yeah, you are. How about we just declare the favor of God over our stuff? I feel like the Lord's leading me to start this business, and I know this business is going to be awesome. I know that God's going to use this business to prosper me and my family because a righteous man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. And so I just believe God's going to bless it. I mean, don't be stupid, right? Don't go sell popsicles in Antarctica or something. But let the Lord lead you and trust it and speak it and declare it. Okay, declare the good things of God because you are God's favor. And if you spend all your time saying that you can't and it ain't going to work and I don't know why I'm doing this because I just can't, then you won't. How many golfers we got in the house? Got any golfers, CJ? Chris, are you a golfer today? No, okay, junior. I I played golf for the first time um, this year. I played for a while, but I played for the first time this year on uh, Thursday. And it was terrible. I lost all the golf balls that I brought with me. <laughs> and fortunately, I have the fish the golf ball out of the water club. And so I had to, I, on 16, I grabbed another five or six golf balls out of the water so I could keep playing. And uh, that's how great it was. But part of golf is, the golf is up here, right? And for me as a golfer, if I could even call myself that, for me as a golfer, I am not like Phil Mickelson or anything, when there's water in front of me, I completely fall apart. 
Right? You guys know what I'm talking about? Right? And so, and so there's water right here. It's like I could hit this club a thousand times and it'll go, it'll go bloop, where it needs to go. But when there's water there, my brain says, you're going in the water. <laughs> and instead of going, bloop, it goes bloop, every time. I was even counting skips. Yeah, I skipped it across the water three times. It didn't make it. Dang it. Sometimes I tell you that to say, one, pray for me, because I'm a terrible golfer, but um, I say that because sometimes in life we look at what's in front of us and we say, this is a water hazard and I can't. Where the Lord wants you to say, you can do this because greater is he who is than he who is in the world. So speak it. Last point, and then we're gonna pray. It's pray for it. Pray for favor, okay? We forget to pray more than we should. Yeah, I'm looking at you. I came across this verse in 2 Corinthians this week, 2 Corinthians chapter one, and it says this. Paul is commending the church at Corinth. He says, as you help us by your prayers, he's like, hey, thank you for being with us. You help us by your prayers. Then many will give thanks on you, our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. Let me try to break that down because it can be confusing. You prayed for Paul and he had favor. That's what that says. Okay? Okay. Paul says this, hey, thanks for praying for me because your prayers resulted in favor, right? What kind of favor did he get? Well, I don't know. He got, you know, the Roman centurion treated him good in the book of Acts. He got to stand before the king, Festus, and share his testimony. Those things are favor, okay? He had favor demonstrated to him because people prayed, Hey, thank you, he says. Thank you for praying for my business. Thank you for praying for my school. Thank you for praying for my marriage. Thank you for praying for whatever it is that's going on in your world. Thank you for praying because your prayers resulted in gracious favor being granted to me. So what should we be doing? Praying, right? You, you know somebody around you that's got a business? Pray for them. Right? Pray, pray exciting prayers over them. Pray that they'll be blessed. Pray that they'll walk in favor. Pray that they'll walk in abundance. Why? Because prayer works. Okay? And we need to get it into our minds that yes, the Lord works, and yes, favor is real, and yes, he wants to do something in you. I believe that we as believers, Daniel chapter one, we should be on the top. We should be the wisest of the king's counselors, not the court idiot, right? You little court jester, you know what I'm talking about, right? I just wanna be the court jester. No, 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 I wanna be the wisest counselor that stands before the king. And scripture shows us again and again that people that turn their hearts to the Lord were touched with favor. Okay, And I believe that the Lord wants to look upon you and gaze upon you the way you would look at a newborn baby and go, oh, he wants to do that. We just need to turn our hearts towards him and begin to believe that he's got good stuff for us. Okay, If you're in the God just wants me poor, humble, and you know, living in a box under a bridge crowd, if you're, that's you, then you hated my whole sermon. But for the rest of us, God wants to do something amazing. I believe God wants to prosper you. I believe God wants to bless you. I believe that you can be on you can be on top and you don't have to be on the bottom. Okay? So I just want to pray for you guys because I believe it works. I want to pray for favor for you. So if you are believing God, that's the key. You are believing God for favor in your workplace, in your schooling, in your marriage, in your home, with your children, how, whatever it is, whatever thing it is that you're like, Lord, I, I would like for you to touch this with favor. If you've got something, please stand to your feet and let's pray.
All right. You guys ready? All right, let's, let's receive. So Father God, we bless you this morning. We thank you for your goodness. Father God, we thank you that you would look at us and you love us. You stare at us and you go, wow, you're beautiful. I love you, you're amazing. Father, I just thank you that that's your heart towards us because we're, we're your kids, we're your children. And so Father God, we ask for favor, that favor would be multiplied in our lives. Favor with peace would be multiplied in our lives today in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for it. I thank you, Father, that at school, we will be the, some of the smartest kids because of your favor and because we're diligent in our studies. Father, I thank you that in our businesses, Father, that we'll be on the top and we will not be on the bottom because of your favor and because we're diligent. Father, we're not looking for a freebie or a free pass and the opportunity to be just lazy. Father God, we just want your favor that you would create for us opportunities, that you would speak to us, that you would guide us into the good things and you would lead us away from the devourer. Father God, I pray that you would keep us from making bad decisions, but we would make good and healthy decisions. Father, that we would choose what you would choose for us. Holy Spirit, we just thank you that you speak to us and it's clear. And Lord, I pray for, for business deals and business promotions. I thank you for supernatural opportunities. I thank you, Father God, that you will, you'll speak to us business ideas and we will be obedient and we will follow after you. Father, I just know, I believe that as we obey you, that you do amazing things in our lives. So Father God, we will, we will not shy away from your presence. We will not draw back from knowing you. Because, Father, as I know you, as I press into you, you look at me, you gaze upon me with favor, and you say, God, I just love this guy. I love this lady. I love this family. I love this church body. Father God, I just thank you that your desire is that we would walk in your shalom, that we would receive it today. We believe it today, and we thank you that the blood of Jesus was shed not only for our salvation, but for our well-being. And we thank you for that today in the amazing, amazing name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. amen. All right, before we, before we leave, before we dismiss, I'm gonna, if you're on our prayer team, and I ask you to come up real quick, stand at the altar. If you need prayer for anything in your life today, you want further prayer along the line of, of favor, you need healing in your body, you want to give your life to Jesus, what, whichever of those things it is, I'm, we have people up here at the altar, they would love to pray for you and pray with you. So as we dismiss, I'm just going to ask you to come up receive prayer, receive the blessing of the Lord. We love you guys. And Father, I just thank you that you are with us as we go. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed. Come receive prayer. Have an awesome day. 9 and 11 next week for Resurrection Sunday.